Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Quiet, please, for tonight. Written and directed by Willis Cooper and featuring Paul Nerum. It's called The Big Box. taken the rig out if it hadn't been for Kavanaugh. That's what gets me down, see? I only took it out on account of Kavanaugh, and now look. You knew Kavanaugh before, huh? Sure I knew him. Kavanaugh was one of my best friends. Where'd you know him? Well, I met him when I was pushing a rig for Jack Strubling between San Francisco and Salt Lake back in 37 and 38. And for four or five years, we both of us was on a transcontinental run from New York to L.A., one of those big diesel jobs. We got pretty well acquainted. I suppose. Matter of fact, one of the reasons we were such good pals, I guess, is I pulled him out of a thing once. You know? What kind of thing? Well, I turned this 14-wheeler over about six miles south of Dwight, Illinois, on 66. Kavanaugh was asleep in the box. What box? I don't know anything about trucks, bud. Oh. Well, you know, there's a box up behind the cab with a bunk in it. One guy sleeps while the other drives, see? I get it. Well, so I turn this job over. Kavanaugh, he's pinned in the box. So I pull him out. He was pretty glad. Guess a guy would be. Always said he'd save my life sometime. Yeah? Even if he had to come back from the dead, he said. Great guy, Kavanaugh. You sure you haven't heard anything new? All we got on the wire was a smashed car and the three fellas dead. Well, what could have become of Kavanaugh? You go back to the start of your story now, fella. We'll find Kavanaugh, all right. If I could do something to help. I mean, I could get me a car and go back there. The Rangers are out, son. Besides, you're kind of under arrest, see? I didn't kill those people. You're a material witness, son. And this here is a mighty funny story. I want to hear the rest of it. Do you know Kavanaugh? Pretty much everybody in Big Spring knew Kavanaugh, son. This is his hometown. I know it. Well... You don't mind if I take a note or two? I don't care. Well, so like I told you, I'm on this run, Chicago to Dallas, see? I have me a one-day layover in Dallas, and then I pick up another big box. Big box of what? Trailer. That's what they call a trailer. No. So I'm down at the dispatcher's office yesterday afternoon, batting the breeze with a couple guys I know, wishing I had a beer, even if I had to drink Texas beer, and I hear the dispatcher hollering at me. George. Why, George? And I say, yeah, what do you want? And he says, come here a minute. So I walk over to the window, a fellow named Archie. What do you want, Archie? I said. George, you want to take a rib rest? I'm going back to Chicago. As a personal favor to me, George? I don't owe you anything, Archie. You kid, be a jerk. Look, for a bonus? I want to go to Chicago. I got a girl. This is only an overnight hop, George. No. Down to Big Spring. You got a lot of other jockeys around here. Why pick on me? We haven't got a man to take this one, George. Thought maybe you would pull me out of the jam. Only a pretty near anything for dough, Archie, but I... Just overnight. You can come back on the bus tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be on my way to Chai. Listen, George. Nah. Fifty bucks in it for you. Nah. George, listen, I got to get this rig to Big Spring. Why don't you drive it? Who's the regular driver? Kavanaugh. What Kavanaugh? Bert Kavanaugh. You know him? Tall, heavy set, red hair, got a scar on his forehead. Yeah. What's the matter with Kavanaugh? He's sick? Do you want to take his rig out? Where is he? Big Springs, his hometown. Well, you know, Kavanaugh's one of my best pals. Why, 
He was pushing a diesel rig out of San Francisco for Jack Strubbing in the old days. Will he be in Big Spring? Capital? Yeah. Why? Why, sure he'll be there. Sure, George. It's a deal. Where's the rig? The big red one there by the pops, see? I get a helper? You don't need a helper. Well, I don't know the road any too well. Haven't been over it in years. Not since Kavanaugh and I used to... All you got to do is stay right on 80 all the way in. Stay on the left fork at Weatherford. I know, I know. The other one goes through mineral wells and all over Texas till it comes back at Abilene. You remember all right. Good old Kavanaugh. I haven't seen him since before the war. Yeah. Well, here's your manifest. What you got it sealed up for? Don't open it. Where am I hauling? Never mind. Listen. Look, George, you agreed to take the load. Now go on and don't give me an argument. You want the fifty bucks now? Keep the fifty bucks, Archie. I'm doing this for Kavanaugh. Well... Seeing that ugly mug of his will be bonus enough, kid. Where do I put the box when I get there? Our place is right off Main Drive, George. Where you see the old mobile sign. Okay, I think I know. To the left. Yeah. Where will I find Kavanaugh when I get there? What? My... My... Kavanaugh will be there at the place. When you get there. You sure, Archie? I can make you promise, George. You get there, Kavanaugh will be there. And so I said okay, and as I started to walk away, I thought I heard Archie say something. Then that's the way Kavanaugh's going to get there. I said, what did you say, Archie? I didn't say anything, George. I thought you said something about Kavanaugh getting there. I didn't say a word. Well, so I think to myself I'm hearing things, and I walk out to the yard and over to the big red box. There's a grease monkey there. And I say, sign me out, Buster. And he gives me the eye. You gonna push Kavanaugh's rig, George? I said, you got any objection? He just hands me the book to sign. You can have it, George. I said, look, fatty, you trying to tell me something? And he just stood there and shook his head. And I said, well then, get out of my road. And I climbed into the cab and wound her up. Well? Huh? Go on. Well, so I head west. It's about 6, 6.30 when I leave Dallas. And I make the 33 miles to the Fort Worth city limits in about an hour. Then I go on towards Weatherford. And I make Weatherford about 9 o'clock. And I think I can stand a cup of java and maybe a big slice of one of them Weatherford watermelons. So I pull up at a place just the side of the square where I see a couple of decent jobs standing. And I go in and have me a slab of watermelon and two, three cups of coffee. And it's pretty dark when I come out. The diesel guy tells me about a wreck up there at Brad, where a couple of boys missed the turnoff 16 coming down from Mineral Wells and laid themselves in their jalopy out like a blueprint all over the road. So I says thanks, and I'm off again. So I'm off again. And I will say that Kavanaugh sure had a way with grease monkeys. This big old box is rolling like a key flyer. The moon's just coming up. I feel pretty good. Figuring I'm going to see my boy Kavanaugh in the morning. And it's going to be a thing after not seeing the boy for six, seven years. I'm whistling away, happy as a peanut roaster. I'm doing a pretty 50. And it's no time at all when I see the flares on the road where the wreck was. So I slow down and crawl along. And then diesel guys wasn't kidding. There was pieces of that jalopy spread out over half an acre. Some officious jerk, excuse me, waved me down, so I pulled up and hopped out. They was single lane in the traffic, so I had to wait a few minutes. Finally, the guy gave me the high level, and I climbed back in, eased her over the bottom corner, and kind of squidged along. You know, it's dark in the cab, and I was watching out pretty careful so as I wouldn't sideswipe anybody's Model T, it wasn't until I was past the last pair of headlights that I came to. What do you mean, come to? There was somebody in the cab with me. There was, huh? Sure. It was Kavanaugh. You recognized him? 
Sure, I switched the cab lights on. Couldn't have been mistaken. Listen, officer, I know Kavanaugh better than anybody does. Sure, it was Kavanaugh. What'd you do? I wasn't going to let him have a laugh on me. I turned the lights back off, and I said I knew that's what he said. What who said? What Archie said when I left the office. I thought he said that's the way Kavanaugh's going to get there. That's the way Kavanaugh's going to get there. And what Kavanaugh say? He just laughed. <laughs> Still pretty hard to fool you, isn't it, George? You old son of a gun. How are you, George? I'm swell. How are you? Well, I'm here. You know, it's been a long time since I heard from you. I never knew what became of you when I went in the army. I've been here quite a while now. Well, that was pretty slick. What? Putting Archie up to top of me into pushing your rig back down the big spring, and you coming along with me. I knew you would drink. Yeah. Where was you? In the box. Well, <laughs> you old son of a gun. That sure is one on me. It sure is. Say, tomorrow... Say, what kind of a town is Big Spring, Kavanaugh? Nice place. You been making the run down there for quite a while? Yeah. Yeah, quite a while, George. Good fun, huh? Going back to the old hometown? Sure is. This time I'm going to stay. You are? How come? I'm done trucking. No kidding? Well, that's swell. This really your last trip? Yep. Yep. Last time down the big road, boy. That's swell. You glad? Well... Yeah, I know. I think about getting out of it sometimes, too. But, I don't know. Say, have you got married? No. No, I was going to, but... <laughs> sure. I know. I got a girl in Chicago, and she wants to get married. But, I don't know. I guess I'll never get married, George. Ah, uh, you can't tell, boy. Say, you know, this is swell seeing you, even if it does have to be your last trip. I don't know anybody I'd rather take it with, George. Me too. I'll never forget how you pulled me out of that thing up there in Illinois that time. <laughs> Least I could do after I turned us over. I always wanted a chance to save your life, kid. Well, if I get in the jam tonight, there's your chance. I haven't been along this road in a long time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of that, George. couldn't be mistaken, George. Listen, how could I be? I told you about that thing where I pulled him out of the box there on 66. You talked about it. How would anybody else know? Yeah, you sure got something there, but... But what? Go on. Well, so Did then... you keep talking to him? Sure. And he talked to you? Certainly he did. I mean, you recognize his voice all right. I couldn't miss it. What are you driving at? I was just figuring... You figure it was somebody else? Well... It wasn't. It was Kavanaugh. Well, go on. Well, we kept right on rolling. You know that road? US-80? Yeah. Sure, why? Ain't there a lot of traffic on it, usually? Right, smart. Huh? Quite a lot. Why? There wasn't last night. Wasn't? Practically none at all. No trucks. Just a few passenger cars. Nobody coming this way. That's funny. I thought it was. I mentioned it to Kavanaugh. What'd he say? Nothing. That's sure funny, George. After the moon went under a cloud, kind of, it got darker in the inside of a coffin. Who said that? Who said what? I mean, did you think of that? Or did Kavanaugh? Gee, I don't know. Guess it was me. No, it was Kavanaugh. Yeah, I remember. I said it's awful dark, and Kavanaugh said dark as the inside of a coffin. Dark as the inside of a coffin. Go on. That sure is a lonesome stretch of road. All the little towns was dark. Didn't see a light for a long, long time. Then we saw a little place alongside the road, and there was a red neon sign on, and Kavanaugh said pull up a minute. Where was that, George? Let's see, about halfway between Eastland and Cisco. You know that curve just before you pass the fish hatchery? Yeah. Little place on the right side of the road coming this way. New place, I guess. At least it wasn't there when I used to drive this way. 
What was the name of the place? Um, some girl's name. Uh, Edwina's place? Edwina, that's it. Funny name. Big neon sign. You know the place? I used to know it, yes. Well, so we pulled up, and Kavanaugh said, sit there a minute to me, and he got down. I was going to come along and have some coffee, but he said, no, they're closed. Anyway, I just want to talk to Edwina a minute. So I sort of laughed and said, go ahead. Yeah. Did you see this Edwina? I could see somebody moving around inside. I just had a couple little nightlights on, see? And then the door opened and she came out. You did see her then? Well, I figured this was Kavanaugh's private business. I wouldn't want somebody staring at me, you know? Yeah, but did you see her? Yeah, I saw her. Go on. Well, I sat there and smoked a cigarette. I could see they was talking, standing there in the neon light. I could kind of hear Kavanaugh, but I couldn't hear her. Yeah. What? I said yeah. Well, I guess it was five minutes, maybe, when Kavanaugh clumped back into the cab. I rolled away slow, getting back on the road. He was hanging out the window, kind of waving at her. And as we pulled away, I could see her in the mirror, waving back at him. You could see her. Certainly I could see her. Am I blind? She was standing there in that red light, looked just as if the place was on fire behind her. What's the matter with you? I'll tell you in a minute. Was that the girl Kavanaugh was going to marry? Yes, that was the girl. You know, I had an idea it was. Yes, that was the girl. That's too bad. Say this was between Eastland and Cisco. That's right. That's the place. What's the matter with you? Well, George, I'll tell you. Edwina built this place about a year and a half ago. I knew I'd never seen it before. And she and Kavanaugh were in love. He used to stop there every trip, naturally. Sure. They planned to get married last month. What happened? Why, well, the place burned down a week before the wedding date, George. What? And Edwina was burned to death in the fire. I know I saw her. I know I saw her. I saw Kavanaugh standing right there with his arms around her. I won't argue with you, George. Maybe I fell asleep there while Kavanaugh was out of the cab. Maybe. No, but I saw the neon sign. I couldn't dream that. If you could dream the rest of it, you could dream that, George. Maybe I dreamed Kavanaugh, too. I don't think you did. I know I didn't. He was in that cab with me all the way from where I stopped there at Strong. Why didn't he say something? Did you ask him? No. Well... Well, but where did he go? What happened to me last night? You killed three men. I didn't! I tell you, I didn't do it. Well, suppose you tell me just what did happen, George. You don't believe anything I'm telling you. I didn't say that. Well, do you? Do you believe Kavanaugh was with me last night? That I believe. Well, what do you think happened to him? You think I killed him? Do you? No, George. Well, where is he? Do you know? I'll tell you later. Where? We'll see. Listen, I'm just about going nuts on this thing. So you left the... place. Yeah. Kavanaugh didn't say anything for a long time. He was there, though. He was smoking a cigarette. I could see him. I'll tell you how I can prove he was there. Look, see here? I smoke Paul Malls. Yeah. Kavanaugh always smoked Terrytons, and he always tore the cork tips off them. He didn't like cork tips. I know that. Well, I'll bet we'll find the three or four cork tips on the floor of the cab. We found him. You see? Go on with your story, George. Yeah. We rode along for a long time. I didn't want to say anything. Figured he was thinking about the girl. Well, you know. We went through Abilene and on through Sweetwater, and still he didn't say a word. I got to wondering about gas. So finally I turned to him and said, Hey, Kavanaugh. What, George? How's this baby on gas? We need to stop for something, I suppose? No, we've got enough to make big spring. Manuel filled the tanks, didn't he? Yeah. We got enough. Okay. Want me to spell you a while? No, I'm all right. Can't have much of a load tonight, the way we're rolling. Yeah. Archie was awfully funny about what's back there in the big box. Handed me the manifest all sealed up. You don't know what's back there? No. Do you? Sure. What? Must be awful valuable. Was once. What is it? 
You'll find out. What's the idea? What do you mean? Trust a guy? <laughs> I'll cut it out, George. Well, nuts to you if you don't want to tell me. Don't nag a guy on his last trip, George. Okay. It's none of my business. No, I hate to hear you talk about that last trip stuff, Kavanaugh. Everybody's got to make his last trip, George. It's a good break I get to make it with my old pal. Wish I'd known before he was down here. Yeah, so do I. I'll be in Big Spring a long time, George. You can come and visit me. I sure will. You do that, George. Don't forget. You kidding? I'll be there. You're a good pal. Do I see a flashlight down the road? Something. More inspectors, I suppose. The way these guys pick on a truck. Axle inspectors, lights inspectors, plant inspectors. Well, nothing to do but stop. So I look out, and there's this car right across the road, and two men, well, three men, standing there in my headlights, and each one of them's got a shotgun. I open the cab door, and the nearest fellow motions with his shotgun. Okay, bud, climb down. So I climb down. I don't know what these inspectors are doing with shotguns, but I take no chances. I'm on the ground in a hurry, without waiting for Kavanaugh. And believe me, I got my hands way up. I don't say a word. And the guy prods me with a shotgun. You haul in the silk? And I say, the what? The silk. And I say, I don't know what's in that truck, mister. And he laughs, and all of a sudden I get the idea. These guys ain't inspectors at all. This is a hijacking. And that's why Archie was so cagey about the cargo. Silk. Silk's been coming in from Japan lately, I read somewhere. But I didn't get much of a chance to do any more thinking. Where's your helper? And I look up through the open door of the cab, and the cab's empty. And I get it. Good old Kavanaugh. He climbed back into the box, I figured. And if I knew Kavanaugh, there'd be a gun in there. Maybe Kavanaugh was going to get that chance to save my life after all. And the guy poked me with the shotgun again. Where's your helper, I said. I haven't got any helper. Keep your guns on him, lads. I'm going to have a look in that cab. And the guns of the two others swung around on me from the front of the truck as he started to cross between it and the car to climb up the opposite side. I glanced up again into the cab, and it was empty. And suddenly that big old truck started to move, and there was nobody behind the wheel. And all three of the men were trapped against their car, and they bumped against each other as they tried to dodge, but they were too late. The 17 tons of truck and trailer were leaping at them like some monster out of a nightmare, and the running board smacked me to the ground. And I heard one last scream as Kavanaugh's truck, in a horrible roaring and grinding of gears, crashed down on them. Go on, George. Well, that's all. When I came to, the highway patrol car was there. The truck was standing alongside the road, beyond what was left of the car and the three men. And Kavanaugh was gone. That's what you told the boys. Well, you know, they wouldn't let me look for him. Yes, I know. And they brought me in here. Yes. And that's the whole story. Now, are you going to get out of here and find my buddy? No, George. We know where he is. What? Where? They're unloading your truck across the street there. And I walked to the window. They had the big doors in the back of the big box open. And six men were carrying something out. You know? Yes, a coffin. Kavanaugh's coffin. Kavanaugh had ridden with me last night. On his last ride. That's why the other drivers wouldn't take the run. Superstitious fools. Or am I the one that's superstitious? Kavanaugh rode the big box with me. You have listened to Quiet Please, which was written and directed by Will Cooper. George, the man who talked to you, was Kavanaugh. Phil Norman was Kavanaugh. David Feldman was the policeman. Other parts were played by Gary Wong and Paul Nero. The music for Paul Plays is composed by Gene Perrazzo, the organist, except, of course, for the theme of Paul Plays, 
which is Mr. Carruthers' own arrangement of themes for the second movement of the Sozo Fox Symphony in D minor. And now, for a word about next week's fireplace, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. Next week we'll have a story called Be a Good Dog, Darling. It's about three women, two dogs, and one man who get their lives all mixed up. And so, until next week at this same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chapman. Quiet Please came to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.